Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep. This has been a long-awaited video that I've been trying to finish editing. It's a week of meals and I hope you guys all enjoy. Now let's get started. The first meal that I wanted to share with you is this delicious crock pot chicken. I do this right before I go to sleep at night. I throw everything into the pot and all I have to do is put it, plug it in in the morning. So here I have some Idaho potatoes, some chicken thighs and seasoning, onion powder, black pepper, soy sauce, ketchup, garlic powder, salt and whole oregano with some sesame seeds. And I have some parved butter and garlic cloves. I simply combine the potatoes and chicken and season the entire thing with some salt, black pepper, oregano, garlic, onion powder, ketchup I would say about a third of a cup, some soy sauce, probably a quarter of a cup of that, mince all of the garlic, Now I mix everything with my hands and I placed about four tablespoons of the par butter. I use Smart Balance right over the top of the chicken and I sprinkle everything with cilantro. For the final touch, I take some sesame seeds and sprinkle that on top as well. You can bake this on low for six to eight hours or on high for three hours. And right before it is finished cooking, I place it into the oven, set on broil for five minutes just to give it a beautiful golden color over the top and look how gorgeous it comes out. The next dinner idea that I wanted to share with you is this sausage with mixed vegetables that is completely par and I topped it with some feta cheese over the top. I found these Beyond uh, sausages in Costco. You can find them in supermarkets in the frozen section sometimes. And it's just a good alternative when you just wanna stay away from meat. And uh, this was my very first time trying it and I was very pleasantly surprised. To make this on a baking tray, I have some baby potatoes with some frozen string beans, onions, some garlic and lemon juice. And these are the seasonings, salt and pepper, and garlic powder, and cilantro. And I have a skillet here, and then I'm going to just be dropping in a little bit of vegetable oil inside. When the oil is nice and hot, I drop the sausages inside and try to brown them on all sides. Now that the sausages have browned really nicely, I take them out of the pan and take those drippings and place them over the vegetables. I then cut the sausages in about four to five pieces each so that they are easy to serve once they're fully cooked in the oven. If you've never had one of these before, I just wanted to show you the texture inside. Don't they look the same as a hot dog? It's just amazing to me how they can make things in the laboratory now that we eat. So to season everything up, I have some cilantro, salt and pepper and garlic powder and some lemon juice that I'll be placing over the top with a little bit of oil. And I'll be baking all of that in a 400 degree oven until everything is nice and crispy. This is how it turned out in the end. I will be honest with you, my kids were not a fan of this dinner, but my husband and I did enjoy it. What I would do differently is make it like a Hasselback type of uh, sausage next time with some barbecue sauce and spices. I think that would go perfectly well over here, but this variety was also amazing. Next up, I'll be sharing with you how I make my fish with rice. You could use any fish in this dish, tilapia, flounder, sole, whatever you have on hand.
To make the rice, I preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I use an oven safe dish, put two cups of rice inside with two and a half cups of water, about a tablespoon of oil and some salt. I bake it for about 35 to 40 minutes until it's done. For the fish marinade, I take a few tablespoons of dill, chop it up, squeeze in about three to four cloves of garlic, and also squeeze in a good amount of lemon. I probably used one whole lemon, if not more, a little bit of oil, some salt and black pepper, and that was the marinade. I washed my fish very well and then I'll be placing it into the marinade so it can marinate for a few minutes before frying everything up. I first seasoned the fish with some grilled fish seasoning. I find this in my local supermarket and once the one side of the fish has all of that seasoning, I flip it over and do the exact same thing with the other side. Whatever marinade you have left over, do not discard it. We will be putting it to very good use at the very end. So to fry up the fish, I take about a tablespoon or two of butter and I place it into a skillet and add in about a tablespoon of any other type of oil. This is just to prevent the butter from burning. I place the fish down, fry it on one side until it has a very nice color, and then I flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. I place some of the leftover marinade right over the top of the fish and you could even baste it with the butter that is in the skillet to just give it a different depth of flavor. Fish really cooks very quickly. It only took about two minutes on each side until the fish was completely cooked through. With the remaining marinade, we're going to make a gravy, so place that back into the skillet, let it come to a very vigorous sizzle and boil, and it's going to get thick, and we're going to just place that all over the fish. At this point, the basmati rice is finally cooked, and I'm just going to be adding in some dill and mixing it through with some butter right over the top. When plating this dish, all I do is add an avocado and it pairs beautifully with the citrus in the fish. Next up is a super easy way to use up leftovers that you have from the weekend. So on Shabbat, I usually make a big piece of meat or chicken and this is a great way to use it up. I shred everything up place it in wraps that I place some lettuce and cucumbers on. You could even add avocados, cherry tomatoes, peppers. The ideas are endless. To 
After assembling the wrap, I place in some garlic mayo that I made with mayo, lemon juice, garlic, salt and black pepper. I drizzle that all around and roll up the wraps. Before serving, I just cut the wraps in half and the kids love it and I love it as well because nothing goes to waste. Here I'll be showing you how I make my DIY taco station. It is super simple. All I do is saute one onion and a little bit of oil. Then I add in some ground beef and seasoning like paprika, salt, pepper, garlic powder. Once I mix all of that and the meat is fully cooked, I add in a small container of tomato sauce and I let that thicken up. It comes out really gorgeous. Separately, I toast up some tortillas in the oven and as soon as they're out of the oven, I fold them in half so they can keep that shape and my kids really enjoy making their own tacos this way. Another quick and simple dinner to make is this chicken and rice bake. I even assembled it the night before. I add in two cups of basmati rice, about one and a half cups of frozen mixed vegetables that I have thawed out, two cups of water, some salt and black pepper with a little drop of oil. I give that all a very good mix and add in my chicken thighs. Once I have had the chicken thighs in, I season them as well. To season the chicken, you could pretty much add anything that you normally like, it's like salt, pepper, garlic powder. I'm going to be using this general chow sauce. You could use uh, regular barbecue sauce or sesame teriyaki sauce. I just lather that all on, put some sesame seeds over the top and I cover it. And if I'm not going to be using it the same day, I just pop it in my refrigerator. And when I get home from work, I, I place it in a 400 degree oven cover it for two hours and then I uncover it for about 10 minutes until it gets a beautiful golden crust. Another weekly favorite in our house is meatballs with spaghetti. All kids love spaghetti and it's so much fun to eat. So I'm going to be taking you along and showing you how I make mine. I have about two pounds of ground beef. I really don't know the measurement of this, honestly. So it just fills up a little bowl. I add in about a tablespoon of salt, some black pepper, onion soup mix, a dash of cinnamon, cumin, and coriander. To add tons of more flavor, you can add in a grated onion, zucchini. Most importantly, you need to add in half a cup of water. The water will give your meat mixture tons of moisture and will keep it from drying out. 
into a preheated skillet i add in a few tablespoons of oil and some food processed tomatoes that i have here in the can i just place all of that into the food processor and blitz it until everything is pureed i just love the way that this sauce looks like it looks very homemade and it looks like you spend hours on it once the tomato sauce comes to a boil i make the meatballs and place them inside the sauce I season everything with about a teaspoon of the onion soup mix, some dried cilantro that I place over the top because I love the pop of color that it gives, a little bit of the garlic powder and onion powder as well. I mix everything well to incorporate all the spices throughout the dish. I cover the lid and let it cook for 30 minutes until it's done. As a side dish, I'm making these battered cauliflower florets. They're super delicious and they're much healthier. I usually fry them, but I'm going to be showing you a different way here today where I'm going to be baking them. The cauliflower that I'm going to be using today is greenhouse grown, so I don't have to worry about any insects. What I do is I simply take them out of the bag and I place them into some warm water so they could defrost. And once they are done, I add in some all-purpose flour over the top and season it with some salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. I mix everything really well and add in one egg. Once the cauliflower chlorets are fully battered, I place some oil onto a parchment lined baking tray and add in the cauliflower. I try to spread them out as much as I can so that they become crispy and if you clump them up all together, they're going to be steaming instead and become very mushy. So try to spread them out as much as you can. I place them into a 450 degree preheated oven until they are browned. Simultaneously, I'm dropping in some spaghetti to be cooked and I cook them as per the directions on the box. After about roasting the cauliflowers for 10 minutes, I remove them from the oven and flip them over so that they can brown on their other side. Now that the spaghetti is fully cooked, I'm going to be placing in a few tablespoons of the Smart Balance, some garlic powder and cilantro.
Ready for a taste test? I wasn't gonna do one, but it just smells so heavenly. You wanna try or should I try? You should try. Okay. No, 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 I should try. Don't you dare, don't you dare. <laughs> How is it? Mm. Mm. <laughs> is it good? No, it's delicious. Now let me go wipe my hands. the sauce as well. So as much as I dislike doing taste tests on cameras, clearly you can tell that my kids do not mind at all. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out to know which videos you prefer for me to make. And if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe.